A 51-year-old gentleman was referred to us for the favor of uh, endoscopic evaluation for dysphagia for many years. And he has undergone an endoscopic uh, manometry for uh, suspected achalasia cardia at uh, somewhere else. And uh, he also underwent a pneumatic dilatation at that time uh, a few months back. However, patient did not have any response of the treatment. And you can see here in the esophagus, there is a large amount of froth and some uh, pool of fluid in a dilated esophagus. You can see here, there is pool of fluid there. This is a telltale sign of achalasia cardia. You can see dilated esophagus. And we all know that uh, esophageal tertiary contractions, ring-like contractions are seen on endoscopy. You can see here, uh, this is an endoscopic diagnosis of achalasia cardia. So in most patients, uh, you may not need uh, the esophageal manometric studies, but if you have, then uh, it's always better to have one and then proceed with treatment. So this patient was given an option of endoscopic pneumatic dilatation vis-a-vis -vis laparoscopic helis cardiomyotomy. Uh, however, patient did want an endoscopic solution if possible. So you can see here that as we are proceeding further, you can see a very tight LES. Despite inflating, uh, the esophagus is not opening up. And with a gentle push, there's a classical give, and then your scope enters the stomach is a standard practice uh, for us to go up to the duodenum, make sure that there is no problem. Here you can see erosive duodenitis in the bulb, and the uh, uh, rest of the duodenum was normal, as you can see deeper in the second and the third part of duodenum. So once we had an evaluation of duodenum, uh, we went out into the stomach and made sure we do a J maneuver. And you can see here how tight is the LES. When you push and pull the scope, you can feel the resistance and the grip of the LES, the lower esophageal sphincter, on the scope. So uh, then we decided we will go ahead with pneumatic dilatation. Uh, we place a metal wire. You can see the savory wire being placed under fluoroscopy control. And as we pull out further, we mark uh, the tip of the scope at the LES, and then uh, my assistant will gently push the guide wire as I'm gently withdrawing the scope. Now, once the scope is out, we will load uh, a dilator. Uh, in this case, we are using a pneumatic dilator with, uh, with markings on it. You can see the two uh, central markings are right on the center of the balloon. So we mark the, the, the balloon and you can see pneumatic dilatation. And where the two markers are there, you can see the waist of the LES. Rest of the balloon is seeing inflated. You can see the waist of the LES. And very gently we are inflating the balloon. And very, very gently we are inflating this 30 mm balloon and make sure the waste disappears completely on fluoroscopy. So this is the end point of pneumatic dilatation. One has to make sure that you see complete obliteration of the waste of the balloon on fluoroscopy. We are doing this in two dimension, uh, and therefore complete obliteration of the waste is a very, very good indicator that your balloon has opened up completely. You can see here, that now the balloon has opened up like completely like a sausage. And uh, we hold this dilatation for about a, about a minute and a half or two minutes. And then we deflate the balloon again. And you can see once I deflate the balloon, uh, you will see how it compresses. You can see the deflation of the balloon. And once again, I will inflate it quickly. And you can see how quickly the, the balloon opens up completely. And that ensures uh, complete dilatation, satisfactory dilatation. And it is our standard practice to see uh, after dilatation rather than putting contrast. We will go ahead down with an endoscope very gently. You can see the LES here. 
you see some blood which is uh, expected because there is some amount of mucosal tear uh, because of pneumatic dilatation. Uh, here we do not require any fluoroscopy guidance or fluoroscopy uh, evaluation of contrast. Uh, and we know that there is no perforation. You can see fairly a wide open LES now. And this patient uh, subsequently had a good uh, symptomatic relief. 